Hi, I'm Steve from Nearly Wild and today I'm here with... Jody from Cultivate. Hopefully you can't hear too much of the noise in the background because we're sitting in um, the cafe, um, or delicatessen I should say, where Jodie's now based. So Jodie, um, tell us a little bit about Cultivate and how we end up being here. Okay, so Cultivate has got a fairly long history, so I won't say it all, uh, but we as an organisation have been going for about five or six years now. So we are structured as a um, cooperative, so it's um, set up specifically to involve food producers, um, employees and the wider general public, so anybody can become a member and then get involved in the organisation that way. But our history um, is involved with another um, environmental organisation and an environmental charity called Kumhari, who've been going for about 15 years. Mm. And they started uh, doing veg boxes. So they used to grow food on a small holding just outside of Newtown, would uh, deliver veg boxes and then collect the compost and food waste from local households to compost on site to grow more food. So the whole idea comes from that kind of circular economy of zero waste, of keeping nutrients on site. Um, so Kumhari then developed into a much bigger kind of food waste collection um, and then a composting site and Cultivate uh, grew out of that literally um, as a community food project. So we run a community garden mm -hmm. uh, which is down next to the theatre in the college in Newtown, about uh, two and a half acres of garden and various other things as well. Um, so that's been going for about six years now um, and then out of that we were doing veg boxes and delivering those and then an opportunity came to actually have a physical shop in the market hall in Newtown when that was redeveloped in 2014 I think. Right. Yep. Um, so we moved in there, we were there for four years um, and then we, um, an opportunity came to move into the deli on the high street in Newtown so we've been here since February this year 2020 and obviously lots has changed since then. <laughs> yes, hence the reason we're sitting at quite a distance um, <laughs> because obviously we're having to maintain the social distancing. Jodie, we're in a really interesting town. So for those of you who don't know, Newtown is a town in mid Wales um, and it's actually the home of quite a lot of, start of quite a lot of exciting movements, including a lot of work with cooperative development. Um, also the home of the very first department store in Britain, um, which many people probably aren't aware of. So it's certainly a place of innovation. Um, and I think you're really pushing that forward as well with what you're doing with Cultivate, Jodie. Um, what, uh, what, what, what does Cultivate now look like? Are you going and collecting food from local suppliers and then selling it here in the deli? Or are you, is it more of a mix? It's quite a mix, actually. So we run a community garden. So um, there we have allotments so individuals can grow their own food. So we're encouraging people to grow their own. So what we've set up is um, essentially micro allotments, a really small scale for um, people that either don't have gardens of their own or work full time or families or for whatever reason uh, don't want to grow on a larger scale. So the idea is that it's really encouraging people to, to learn how to grow. So a um, micro allot, is that like bigger than this table or uh, not much actually oh, really? so they oh. are about uh, yeah two to three meters um, so they are really quite small okay. so the idea yeah. is that we found that when we developed the community garden we did a lot of consultation and it was actually um, we did a community design process mm -hmm. to design the gardens uh, in, inviting lots of different people to, to feed in their ideas to find out what people wanted and one of the things that came out was that traditional allotment sites were far too big and the waiting list was far too long and a lot of people that had never grown before or didn't have capacity to tend a full-size allotment wanted a w essentially a way into growing um, so we developed that and then that area is actually growing quite a lot so we've got about 40 micro allotments for individuals to, right. to kind of yeah. rent on an annual basis they've got shared tool shed they've got a compost toilet there's a roundhouse there for some shelter mm. so the idea is that that's fairly self-contained and then also at the community garden we have a community growing space so before lockdown we had a weekly volunteer session and we had up to 20 people joining that each week so again learning to grow together um, and then we would maintain and tend the, the community garden space and then the third element of what we're doing at the community garden is um, we've actually working in partnership with another project called pathways to farming which is training new kind of commercial food producers mm -hmm. so we've essentially gifted some of the space there so one of the polytunnels and some of the larger outdoor growing area for uh, we've got two growers there 
um, for them to essentially learn to grow on a more commercial scale. And that is then connected with, we've just set up, it will help support, should I say, a local uh, veg box scheme. So this is the second year of a completely local veg box scheme. So last year we worked and supported four growers. So they essentially set it up themselves. So two were growing at the Cultivate site, two growing on their own small holdings. And they uh, created a veg box scheme uh, doing a seasonal veg box sort of July to um, October right. for 20 veg boxes. So this year we've expanded slightly, uh, so we've got more growers involved, roughly doing the same number of veg boxes. Um, and obviously everything has changed quite dramatically this year, so we can't get together, we can't do work parties on each other's land and things like that. So it's been quite difficult to expand. Mm. Um, so again, we're doing 20 veg boxes. So that um, is a collection of about seven growers right. working together to feed into that that local veg box. Interesting. And you've teamed up with somebody as well with an electric bike. I we understand. have indeed, yeah. <laughs> so ha having moved into the deli in February, um, we were kind of operating, so we were still selling local fruit and veg, um, and then we'd expanded to have a bit of a cafe area where we're sitting now outside, um, and doing kind of coffees and things like that and cakes. Um, and then obviously not, oh, it was probably less than a month, we ended up having to uh, close the front door essentially and we switched to an online click and collect service. So we went back to our roots of doing veg boxes. So in the first couple of weeks, there was an overwhelming number of support. So we were doing about 50 veg boxes. That has tailed off now. And obviously the local veg box has kind of come up in its place. So that mm. started in June. So we have 20 weekly regular customers for that. Um, and then we're doing another sort of five to 10 on top of that. And what we tend to find, and especially this year we've noticed, is that people are actually growing more of their own, which is which is yeah. fantastic. And a lot of people are at home more, either um, working from home or furloughed or just during lockdown. So um, people are actually growing more of their own food. So we do find that the supply and demand doesn't always match up quite well. Yeah. Um, because well, this was something I wanted to ask you yeah. about really. Because <laughs> um, I mean, it sounds amazing all that you're doing, and I can and, and immediately I then start thinking about it from the sort of actually running that in a sort of semi-commercial approach that you're having to do. Yeah. And um, it, I mean, particularly with that whole issue of supply and demand, how hard is it? Is it difficult to actually find good suppliers? Is um, it difficult to find good customers, or it's it's inter we, this year has been particularly challenging. Um, so we had a very dry spring, which meant that a lot of the early crops either bolted or weren't quite ready. And mm. then we had a really late frost, so we've lost a lot of top fruit in mid Wales. So a lot of our producers that that grow a lot of fruit have have pretty much lost everything. So year to year, we always have different challenges. And then obviously. Um, with uh, COVID-19 that's just increased the challenges so we found early on it's sort of eased out a little bit now but we work with an organic wholesaler in mid Wales um, who obviously buys stuff from all over the world um, and we were having real issues with supply there um, just because of the length of time for things kind of getting through checkpoints and various different things and obviously farmers not necessarily having enough farm workers on site and things like that so mm. there was it was quite it's it's leveled out a bit now um, but then we also find that as local production comes on, either more people are growing their own and traditionally um, we would see a switch in our trade in the summer to kind of more tourism trade. Um, so either people living here would go away on holiday or holiday makers would be coming here um, and they wouldn't necessarily be buying the same kinds of things. Right. Um, so it is always quite challenging, which is why a local veg box is a really good way of supporting producers because what we've essentially done is we've got 21 customers this year and they've essentially signed up for the entire season. Right. So they are signed up to getting a weekly veg box and if they're away for a week they can donate it back to cultivate and we can either donate it to the food bank or share it out mm. or they can give it to a neighbor or a friend so the idea is that those growers know at the beginning of the season that they have that regular support that they know that the food that they're growing is going to get used and that customers are going to buy it so it's matching up producers and customers because it's quite risky for local producers to just be like right I'm going to grow all this food not knowing necessarily where to sell it because one thing we were working with with the Pathways to Farming project as well was teaming um, producers up with restaurants and cafes and things like that to, yeah. to build partnerships there obviously again this year everything has changed mm. so that's quite an important thing that we're working to do is actually ensure that the food that is produced locally does definitely get 
used. Interesting. So there's one other element that you, you mentioned there that I'd like to touch on, which is this thing about um, over or under production. Yeah. And this constant balancing that you're having to do. And when we talk a lot about localizing economies and making them work for the local area, but there is always this this problem and probably the reason trade started in the first place which is once you have a surplus of something then you want it, it to yeah. go somewhere you don't want it wasted and we're in a bit of a, a almost a corridor or I, I think of it a bit of as a food corridor through to the midlands mm. um, have you explored the idea of using some of the surplus as a way of supplying particular places maybe in the urban areas or is that something you've got in mind or is it something you've we tried and gone away from uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have looked into that and what we found is that you would have to ramp up production quite significantly for that to be viable. Yep. So if it's worth, because um, the cost of delivery, and especially the higher value items are your salads, your greens, your things like that, they don't last very long. So if you're growing field scale salad production, you need to know for definite that you've got an outlet for it. It's different to growing potatoes or carrots or beetroot or something like that that stores and has a longer life. Mm. It's got a lower value, but it's got a longer life. So they're kind of potentially equal um, and we had looked into that and yeah you would have to ramp up production quite significantly for it to be worth kind of selling and then you're, mm. you're increasing your competition as it were if you're going to sell to Shrewsbury to Birmingham to Aberystwyth um, because they've also got their own satellites as well yes so we ended up refocusing and trying to build more of a connection with our immediate community so going down the route of the allotments and mm. the smaller scale like supporting smaller scale food producers so what we've done is rather than put all our eggs in in one basket is we've we're training more producers so we're spreading that out a bit more so we're trying to support more people to grow food so that hopefully there's a bit more of a balance there right so we end up um probably taking a, a slightly different line which is effectively what you've done is diversi by diversifying your food producers you've got a lot of people making a part of their income from yeah. growing fruit and veg and so on as opposed to a small number of people trying to make all, all of their of income their, from yeah. it and then all of the issues that, that that then entails and that's what we found is most uh, especially if you're a small uh, food producer it's not your sole income and it's very difficult to make it your sole income yeah. because you fall through the net of grant funding in terms of agricultural support because the, the size that you're growing on is just too small um, and then you can't compete with pricing because it's generally still hand grown so in terms of um, you can't necessarily drop your pricing because it's not mechanised so you're not necessarily saving on labour time mm. so we didn't want to go down the route of squeezing producers and trying to necessarily compete with supermarket prices and things like that so it was more about um, the value of food and getting people to understand what is seasonal um, so with the veg boxes um, you're literally getting what's available that week. Yes. We haven't got tomatoes yet. We thought we'd have tomatoes, but we don't. So there's no tomatoes in this week's veg box mm. um, and things like that. So it's about creating that story and adding value to, to food and getting people to understand what the whole the whole process of what's involved with food production and therefore probably a very good reason for teaming up with a deli yes uh, yeah. <laughs> and so one of the the things that we uh, one of the uh, another reason that we we chose to move here um was the additional capacity to kind of there's a, there's a bit of seating area here so we can actually develop a bit more of a cafe so what we've just done Again, timing's been very weird this year, but um, we've just had some funding to revamp the... Um, with, there's a bungalow at the community garden with a kitchen mm. in, um, and we've just had that completely redone, so it's a commercial kitchen. Oh, um, so the, the vision uh, before February... Uh, sorry, before March, when lockdown kind of started, was that we would be using any surplus food uh, in the kitchen and then turn that into salads, sandwiches, quiches, things like that, that we would then sell back through the deli. Mm. So reducing our wastage. So if there's a glut of something from our producers and we couldn't necessarily sell direct, we could be like, right, let's turn that into chutley, let's turn that into something that we can then use mm. rather than it going to waste or them having to drop the price to ensure that they sell the produce. So the idea is that 
we're kind of reducing waste and increasing demand as well so we can kind of say hopefully year on year we're getting a bit better so we work quite a lot with other small businesses that make um, added value products jams chutneys things like that and we know that there's a demand for certain things so we can either encourage producers so one thing is a, a local jam maker um, she tries to use as much local produce as possible and she makes a really popular beetroot chutney. Right. So she wants 50, you know, up to 50 kilos of beetroot, which we couldn't grow at the community garden for her, but we can say to, to a couple of our producers, def it's definitely worth growing beetroot because we know that there's somebody that will definitely buy on in large quantities. Right. So it's about being aware of, of what's around and we know that some of our producers are really good at growing root crops so they can grow all the potatoes, carrots, onions, um, beetroot, and others have got land that's better suited to different things. Some are quite high, so they're better for fruit. So it's about using the skills of, of the people in the land as best possible, really. Yeah, and it also sounds like an awful lot of networking and a lot it's a, of yeah, it's quite <laughs> Yeah, and it's quite a lot of coordination to, yeah. to bring people together. And hopefully year on year, we're getting better at it and um, increasing the strength of that network. Mm. So that, because it's hard work growing, it's really hard work. Um, and quite often it feels like you're doing it on your own. So by, especially by doing the veg boxes, is there's a community of growers there that are mm. working together. So it's not one person growing one thing. So, you know, we, at the beginning of the season, um, the growers sat down virtually on <laughs> video call to create a cropping plan for the season. So it would be based on what either grows well or sharing it out so that not only one person grows the higher value tomatoes, for example, so everybody puts in five portions a week or whatever it is, mm. so that people are growing a diversity of food as well rather than one person just growing salad because if that salad crop fails, you've suddenly got no salad and things like that. So it's about sharing it out. So if one person's, you know, they get slug damage on their kale, for example, then another person's probably got a bit extra that can you can kind of swap around and support each other so each week we're having to kind of update and be like right okay what's available this week oh you've got a little bit extra of that you haven't got quite enough of that and so there's quite a lot of juggling involved to Absolutely, to yes. get that all together but yeah well that's really interesting i think it probably better stop because i think the two of us could chat for hours <laughs> on this um, I'm sure we could. <laughs> we're, we're hopefully going to be visiting as well um, some of the people I know work with you yeah. and supply. Um, but for those of you who are interested to know more, do pop into the deli in Newtown, meet Jodie. On Thursdays and Fridays at those, the moment. <laughs> those and Fridays, under the restrictions. Um, and also, if you're a visitor of the area passing through, it's well worth popping into the deli and just seeing some of this local produce. Um, learn a little bit more about the place you're passing through or the place you're staying in. Um, meanwhile, more information at the end of the video as usual. And thanks very much indeed, okay. Jody. Great thanks, to see geez. you. Cheers.